Hey there geeks and you get, I'm the Bearded Geek and this is how to invest in your stream in 2021. So streaming can be a very expensive hobby or a career that you're looking to build and to start that off it can be expensive but you don't have to buy everything that's top of the range that the bigger streamers use. I don't. So this video I'm going to show you some budget options but a budget option that is more than what you need really you don't have to have the biggest and best of everything to get a stream that looks like this number one only put into your stream what you can afford to lose first rule of investment only put in what you can afford to lose don't spend your last few quid on overlays microphones webcams budget accordingly and have a plan if the equipment you have does the job that you needed to do then stick with it until you're in a financially better place to upgrade your equipment. So you, you started out, you're looking at all of the other big streamers and YouTubers, you're seeing their equipment that they are probably sponsored to be advertising, like the Sony cameras, etc. Don't assume that just by buying the things that these huge streamers use, is going to make you a big streamer. Um, those streamers and those YouTubers started out with cheap gear. A lot of them still use some cheaper gear. If you look at Tim the Tapman, he started off with a cheap webcam, gaffer tape to his wall. There's a YouTube video to show it. He was gaming on a TV and a laptop, and look how big that guy is. He's only upgraded since he's become such a big, big streamer. So buy within budget, buy for the size of your audience, and then maybe you can upgrade. I've upgraded a few bits along the way. Your most valuable investment is your time. So you're watching this video right now to gain some knowledge maybe and to learn on streaming. That's you investing your time and you're investing it wisely to try and learn your craft. When you go live on stream or when you're recording your YouTube videos, you are investing your time and you're investing that time wisely. But don't overdo it. When I first started, I was trying to stream every free minute I had. I was just smashing Warzone for between 8 and 12 hours every time and I got bored, I got narky on screen. Use your time better. You can use your time to edit videos, to push your content out onto TikTok, onto YouTube, onto Twitch. Try and balance it. I've, I've learned to balance it a lot better myself. If you do overdo it, you risk burning out and burnout is real. I've not burned out, I just took a step back from YouTube for a while to try and get more time into editing and into learning editing, building the room. But if you only focus on streaming and you want to grow, that's a bad investment of your time because you need to come from multiple angles to promote your streaming. After a year of streaming, do I look back and think I should have done things differently? Absolutely. The other thing is, do you want to be a year's time looking back and thinking I should have spent more time studying? I should have spent more time with the family, with the kids. I should have spent more time looking after my health. Use your time wisely. Um, your family, your food and your bills, it all comes before streaming and gaming and recording videos. Number two, design your channel in line with number one i'm not saying to go out and spend hundreds or thousands of pounds on fiverr and get in all the best animated overlays and all the best top alerts that you can get what i'm saying is to make your stream personal to you uh, your stream is a reflection of you if you have bars everywhere sub goals flashing alerts kill kill bar counts, three or four logos, um, and pop-ups, etc. all over the screen. It looks too busy, you've gone too far. And it's easy to do because I did it. Um, it's easy to do because I did it in the beginning. I used to have an emote waterfall effect on my screen. I had 200 sound alerts that were getting spammed because I didn't have timeouts on them. I had bars for followers, bars for subscribers, bars for gifts bars for absolutely everything i had leaderboards and it got too much i mean even on this recording screen i've just put too much on there there is too much distracting i've put all this effort into the background and then i've got three different 
bearded geek logos is too much. What I'm saying is you don't have to throw everything at your stream and at your screen and at your audience at once. The more you put on there, the more taxing it is for your PC. So if you don't have a higher end PC, which I don't, it's going to be too taxing on there. Animated screens look cool, but do you really need them? I have static layouts now to save on the, the PC usage and taxation of the PC. And Twitch has changed over the last year that I've been active on Twitch. People are having less and less on these screens and less animated and flamboyant looking overlays. And that's because you want your audience to concentrate on you and to concentrate on your gameplay. A good logo? is a great investment. Um, I'm quite lucky in that I didn't pay for my logo. I have a friend that is studying graphic design and computer game, create, creating art design on computers, etc. And he's done this for absolutely free for me. He does a lot of my on-screen, on-stream um, artwork for me. If you need to invest, which I think a lot of you, you can, you can invest a little bit of money and get a great quality looking logo that you can then put across all of your platforms and it'll allow people to identify with your brand. I mean, I've got the Viking haircut and beard, so obviously I went down the Viking route. Now, I'm not ripped like this guy, clearly. It's, it's just a branding technique. Um, I used to have different branding for YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. Now, I'm just going to be using this logo. Now, Comic Well, she has designed it for me. So, if you've got a friend that's a graphic designer, ask them to help you. It'll save you money and it'll look good. Or, oh, even with a little bit of talent, you can make your own and you can make your own good logos. I mean, I originally made this logo. Comic just tweaked the colours, the outline, and made it pop that little bit more to make it look more professional. Um, all of my sound alerts on stream I've made myself with GIFs and little tiny sections of music that I distort a little bit not to get copyright strikes and they're only little three or four second blasts of music. And with a little bit of work and some YouTube videos to help you along the way you can make your channel look good for free or, or almost free. <laughs> Don't get caught spending £5 on Fiverr per little emote for your channel. They are so small, you need to make a good emote, but you can make them yourself and you can do it with Photoshop, you can do it with Microsoft Paint. They don't look the greatest with Paint, but that's where some of mine have been made. But if you start to get an income from Twitch when you become affiliate, then you can look at putting it into having your panels and your logos made on Fiverr or by paying somebody that you know to do them for you. And if you can't afford it, make them yourself. Um, I've made a lot of my stuff myself and I've had a lot of help from other streamers. If you put a lot of effort into your channel, even if it don't cost you anything, if you put the effort in, people will see the effort. The effort will show and people will be attracted to that effort. You look more professional. Lighting. Lighting is a major, major thing. If you've got a cheap web camera and you don't have lights, it won't work. I'll show you. My webcam through natural lighting. It looks awful. You can see all the pixels starting to formulate because the sensors in the webcam are so small. Now initially I used to be in a tiny room with one ring light and the monitor screen and that was enough. One ring light, sort of half of your face. So I have two and really washed out, really blurry. That'll calm down in a second once the camera gets used to it. And then <clears throat> I used to have rope lights. Rope lights don't look that good. The RGB setting on them. So I bought a floodlight. Has multiple colors on there. It's great for streaming because my webcam stream would only be in a little corner there. With a white it's so bright that it lights up the room behind me. I do have a big light up there. I do have a main light source up there, but it's too yellow and I don't like it. So you need the ring lights to focus on you to make you stand out from your background. And then I've got a 60 watt colored fl floodlight behind me, illuminates the background to make yourself pop. And that isn't to say to go out and buy the Elgato streamer panel lights as nice as they are. 
can you warrant the cost? Would I get a better light source on me from one of those panels? Yes. £160? I don't want one. I could buy another floodlight for £22, mounted in the corner there, and it would probably be too bright. But I could get better effects for a lot cheaper. Uh, ring lights. You can pick these up for £20. You don't have to buy the Elgato. I mean, these feel quite flimsy. This one I've had for a year, not a problem. The smaller one behind the monitors to sort of light the other side of my face, I, that cost like £12 and it's on a little desk stand. Just pokes up over the top of my monitors. Um, also, if you're going on the green screen light, uh, down the green screen route, you will need more light than I have. I mean, my light needs working on and I'll get there. If you're going to use green screen, you have to have such good lighting on the green screen and on yourself so you don't blend into that green screen. I've seen lots of streamers where they turn and they disappear. Again, this is all stuff you need to look forward to. If you go and buy the green screen, is your lighting adequate? Or can you just clean up behind you? Um, I don't use green screen. I've got all this. Why would I need it? Um, and it can be taxing on your PC. Um, you can use a regular light bulb and a regular lamp, but if I turn that light on above me and I didn't use these ring lights, there would be a shadow coming down and you'd end up looking creepy, I suppose. A company that I buy a lot of stuff from is called Newer. I am in no way sponsored. The microphone is newer, that ring light is newer. I think my floodlight might be as well. And you can buy some cheap budget versions from them. This microphone came with the, with the swing arm, with a pop shield for the front, with this cradle. And it was a while ago when I had this, but it was less than £50, much less, I think. Um, you can pick these up on Amazon now. Uh, newer models, USB, plug straight in. And they do the job. You just got to look at your settings in OBS or Streamlabs and in your PC. The best light you can use is daylight, but I live in Wales. It's grey outside. There's very little light. Also, if you're using daylight, the sun moves through the day. So your light will keep changing through the day. So you need to sort of negate or get rid of any daylight. I'm going to put black up, blackout curtains up here. Take the light completely out of the room. And then eventually I'll replace these two ring lights with some form of main light. You can't guarantee the sunlight, so try and take that out of the equation and only use lights you can control. The LED lights that I used to use in strip rows behind me in the small room were great in the small room because they were out of sight and they just illuminated the wall behind me a little bit. Out here you can see individual bulbs and it's not the look I was going for. You can buy diffusers etc, but then that's, that's costing money or by the floodlight. Normally I've got it further back this way, but I was even wanting to show off the collection. RGB, 60 watt floodlight, and you can do a lot with that. That'll make your stream and your YouTube videos look much better. Um, the RGB rope light things, the cheaper you buy, the more they flicker, the more you get a waving effect on your stream in your webcam. You can make a bland room look really good with colored lights behind you and lighting yourself correctly on camera makes your webcam work easier and less hard it adds a good aesthetic for people to look at i mean this screen is normally a tenth of the size of where it is now get a cheapish webcam of amazon mine is a vitali um i think it cost me 30 pound just make sure you've got the light in to make sure you can get the most out of that webcam number four sound now do you need a sure or a legato microphone you don't. This, as I said earlier, is a newer USB microphone. It isn't expensive and with some tweaking of the settings on your PC and Streamlabs, you can make this sound like an expensive microphone. Don't be tempted by Wish microphones. They sound awful because the diaphragm inside the microphone is cheap and flimsy. These newer microphones, they are built for budget streamers, however, they work really well. And if you're a gaming streamer like myself, don't use your headset that's 10 years old as your only way to talk to chat. A, you can't split it between chatting and in-game like I do. And that £25 headset in Argos, while it might sound okay in-game for your teammates, it sounds like dog shit on YouTube videos, etc. It'll pick up every breath. You can't set noise gates for it. You can't take out background noise. And if you want to go down the Elgato or the Shure microphone XLR route, you will pay in excess of £100 on that microphone. Just the body of the microphone. You've just spent between 100 and 300 pounds on your Elgato or your Shure microphone. 
and then you realize that it won't plug into your PC because the XLR microphone is a three pin cable. The XLR side of that microphone is the cable. So then you need to buy an audio interface and that doesn't come cheap. I've got an audio interface here somewhere. It was a cheapish one. I think it's my son's. And it doesn't give it doesn't give as good a sound as this cheap USB microphone. If you're watching this video at your level, because no big streamer is going to watch this video, at your level, this is all that you need is a, is a USB microphone and some decent settings. Do some research before you buy. You you can look on Amazon for the reviews and a lot of people say I use this for streaming or podcasting and it's great if it's used for streaming and podcasting that's what you need that's what you can get away with like with this and this came with the boom arm as I said and a few extras that you can put on the boom arm itself I've seen people spend a lot of money on these do you need a boom arm no you don't you can rest a microphone on the desk in front of you and get away with it you can use an old microphone stand and get away with it. It's absolutely fine. A rigid microphone stand. This, this is just for convenience. I can put it in front of me when I'm playing. I can put it out of my way. And it's just easier to move around and get to things with a boom arm. But you don't need to go out and spend £200 on these really good looking boom arms. I mean, yes, they float in and all the rest of it. This shouldn't have the ability to turn only to go up and down I've just loosened some screws no noise for a spring boom arm a drop microphone um, if you drop a microphone chances are it'll never work again or if it does it'll be crackly so a boom arm for me is a great idea because I am really clumsy with stuff on my desk I have literally knocked everything off my desk or spilt stuff in everything breaking a diaphragm on a microphone is very easily done if this was to break would i buy another one absolutely would i spend a hundred pound on one no i'd buy another cheap one like this bit of wd-40 and loosen a couple of screws works just as good as the expensive ones number five camera i'm not going to tell you that a cheap web camera can give you the same quality as a proper sony camera this video in itself is proof of that but as with microphones, you can get a lot of settings in with OBS, in with Streamlabs, and in with your PC to make an okay-ish webcam look really good. Get light in the correct settings, you can get a good look. When you're a small streamer, you can't go and spend £500 on a camera. And those £500 cameras are not going to get you the effect you want. The Sony camera that I see a lot of streamers using is £1,500. That's a grand and a half on the camera for something that when you're gaming is this big. You can go out by all means if you've got the money to, go out spend it. You can use it outside of your streaming, you can use it for photography, absolutely fine. But it's not going to make you a huge streamer because you have a grand and a half piece of kit attached behind your monitor. If you're a great gamer, I'm not then your webcam is going to be secondary to your gaming. If people are tuning in to see you, you know, world record kills on Warzone, then your webcam is secondary. Myself, I'm not that good a gamer. Um, I'm more for comedy value and hanging out. And then I do need my camera to look a bit better. I will upgrade it. But to get to the point where I'm earning money off Twitch, this cheap webcam has done exactly what I needed to. Um, when I was in the other room, people kept asking me what the camera was. It looks really good. As I said, it's a Vitaro cheap camera off Amazon. It does what I needed it to. What I needed to in this bigger room where I need more light, it doesn't look as good for the size channel that I have. It's absolutely fine. Will I upgrade it? Yeah, of course I will. I won't be spending a grand and a half on a Sony camera. I'd rather spend the money on decent lighting. That's my five tips. So. Remember, you can set up a stream on a pretty low budget and grow just as fast as if you spent thousands of pounds. It's all about your character. It's all about what you do on camera and how you come across or how you play your games. Having all of the top of the range equipment, it doesn't guarantee success. Nothing guarantees success. This might all, m me and my streaming career, might just all end suddenly because people just don't find me funny anymore or I get bored of it. 
but only put in what you can afford to lose. If your streaming died tomorrow, if you lost the passion for it, and you've only spent £40 on two ring lights, if you've only spent £40 on a microphone and £30 on a webcam, you're not really losing a huge amount of money, and you could put these to use elsewhere if you need to. If you've spent or blown thousands of pounds on this and your lifestyle changes, then what are you going to do? You're going to have to sell, resell prices on these lights, £5 if you're lucky, the webcam, £10 if you're lucky, microphone, not much at all. Continue on with your streaming, and if you continue and you start to see a return on your investment of time, then start to upgrade, but upgrade wisely. If what you have is working and you're still growing, then you don't really need to upgrade. I started to upgrade, I saw my channel seem to grow. When I was just sat in a gamer chair, when I was just sat in that older gamer chair in the living room in front of the TV, it wasn't a good look, it didn't sound good. My channel didn't grow. I had a dedicated smaller room. It looked better, the aesthetics were good. I had layouts. We just, on a budget, upgraded and the channel has shown some growth because it looks more professional. But I could go out and spend another thousand pound tomorrow on upgrading my equipment and it wouldn't make a difference, I don't think, to my channel growth at this time. But if you do have to upgrade and if you think you must upgrade, the first thing I would upgrade is your sound. Your sound has to cut through and sound good to everyone. If I drop into a stream and I can hear hissling and crackling, I'm straight back out. If I drop into a stream and there's no webcam but the audio sounds good and the streamer is interacting, I'll stick around. So sound to me, or I think sound is more important on streaming. Learn with it, have fun with it. Don't get stressed out by it. don't get stressed out by it all. Or you'll find you've wasted your time, you've wasted your money, and you're starting to dislike what could be an amazing journey. Um, I absolutely love t streaming on Twitch. I love creating content. I love creating little funny TikToks to advertise. I'm enjoying learning to edit. If you found any of this useful, please hit the subscribe button down below. Please like, comment, share the video. These videos are sort of my way of trying to show you guys what I've learned along the way um, to try and stop new streamers making mistakes that I made because I made mistakes early on I still make mistakes now there's not a stream goes by at some point where I haven't forgot to unmute a microphone I'm just looking to help you guys make it a bit easier on yourselves so I have been the bearded geek or as everyone's calling me lately beardo you can catch me on twitch.tv forward slash bearded geek live um, I don't have a set schedule because I do shift work. However, I have my schedule updated weekly on Twitch for you to see. Hopefully, I'll see you there. And if not, I'll see you here for more unboxings, reviews, or more videos like this.